All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today across the country and the world. For those who don't know me, my name is Alexander McCobin, and I'm the CEO here at Conscious Capitalism, and just so appreciate you taking the time to learn and grow in community with us today. And I'm really excited for this conversation with Kip Morse to explore how Conscious Capitalism and the Better Business Bureau are aligned and what more we can do to align with each other going forward to build not just these great organizations, but support all the great businesses that both of our organizations serve, the work that you're doing to elevate humanity through business, build trust in business, and just build more impactful businesses going forward. Now, as many of you know, conscious capitalism is a philosophy that emphasizes the human nature of capitalism and business. It's a movement of business leaders around the world working to change and improve the practice and perception of capitalism to elevate humanity. And Conscious Capitalism Inc. is a nonprofit organization dedicated to catalyzing that movement. Every week, we offer these virtual gatherings as a way for the community to see how this philosophy takes shape in the leadership journeys and business practices of those in our network and how we can expand the network and collaborate with partners. Now, Today's gathering is gonna run for about 45 minutes. Kip and I will be in conversation for the first 30, but we're going to have a lot of audience questions and participation, especially in the last 10 to 15 minutes, but we'll be taking questions even as we go through this. So at any point, if you have a question or an idea you want to throw out there, please type it into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any technical questions or issues, please email us at info at so we can address them as quickly as possible. And now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Christopher Kip Morse is the president and CEO of the International Association of Better Business Bureaus, the umbrella organization for local independent BBBs across North America. In this position, the international team that provides IT, marketing, policy, and other support to the iconic brand founded in 1912 including BBB.org, which tracks nearly 7 million businesses and has 15 million visitors a month. Kip has more than 30 years of experience with the BBB, including 20 years as president and CEO of the BBB in Columbus, Ohio. He served on a number of committees, boards, and task forces of the international organization, as well as its foundation, the BBB Institute for Marketplace Trust, before being tapped for the job in early 2021. Kip. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Alexander, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the conversation. This is wonderful. Me too. And, and before we get into the history of the BBB and talking about our overall alignment, I want to give a shout out and appreciation to the Columbus chapter of Conscious Capitalism, where I think you first engaged with Conscious Capitalism and that you've been a part of for a while. Is that right? Yeah, I got involved with them, got to know a number of individuals, and uh, really um, the conversations resonated. It led to having uh, one of them join our board of directors. Um, it led to some different partnerships, collaborations on some different uh, events that we were having. Um, so yeah, it was it, you know it was much of the same reason that we're having the conversation now. It, there was so much in alignment that uh, we were having fun um, engaging with them at the Columbus, Ohio. That's awesome. I am so, I, I was excited to hear that. I've enjoyed our conversations beforehand and want to actually start for anyone who maybe isn't too familiar with the BBB or the history. And I'm wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about why the BBB was started over a hundred years ago and what the organization's purpose has been and how it's evolved over the years since then. Well, really, yeah, to take you back a little bit quick on the history is that, um, you know, and I always took pride in it in Central Ohio because we still had some of the founding board members from 100 years prior still serving on the board, um, representation from their, their corporations. But it was really around businesses that got together and basically said, we need to protect the free enterprise system. And we need to um, make sure that we have take the responsibility that is required from leaders in our free enterprise to really step up and start to um, lay down the groundwork for um, standards. Um, so they did that, started um, BBBs across the country. They kind of exploded over time. BBBs are, were formed at different, uh, different years, different uh, um, uh, time periods. 
but they, it was all built around um, laying out um, standards uh, for um, for businesses, and that led to being a standards-based organization. Um, it led to um, bringing members in and then making sure that they met those standards. That's kind of morphed into um, accreditation, so evaluating businesses based on standards. And then ultimately, consumers want to know who, who they are, and they want to know who are the ones that are, are doing good. And so um, it led into a lot of uh, um, publicizing that information and making that um, available to the public free of charge. And we've done, been doing that for, as you said, for over 100 years. So that's built up the, the number of those uh, visitors to the website um, to the point where, you know, we're driving consumers to trustworthy businesses. And, um, and it's, it's been incredibly consistent with um, the conscious capitalist movement. Um, you know, there's a, a better way to do business and it's within our ability to have a positive impact on the world. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, there is a better way to do business. And so we really measure uh, based on integrity and performance consistent with um, Stephen M. R. Covey's, you know, in order to build trust, you need to really, it's, it's, it's character and competency. And so we're, we're measuring the competency and then uh, addressing the character. I think you're right, Kip, from everything I know about the BBB and our conversations and talking with leaders of local BBBs, there is so much alignment and you have been doing this for a lot longer than conscious capitalism has been around. And I think some people might remember the BBB from 30 years ago and remember that it was a place to go and and report businesses that weren't acting ethically or that were breaking the trust and confidence of consumers and the public and might think that's all the BBB was or is. So I, could you expand, expand on what that was before and share a little bit more about what the BBB is doing now because it is so much more than that? Yeah, and, and um, much of that has not gone away. We, we still um, handle complaints. We've got um, 150 offices, 95 uh, uh, 150 locations, 95 offices, all in North America, um, all through Canada as well. Um, and they are day in and day out, boots on the ground, addressing um, marketplace concerns, um, evaluating whether it's a complaint, a customer review, or a um, uh, or a scam. And so we've got you know resources for um, taking in scam data and really building out extensive reports based on the the research that we get. Handling complaint data that really feeds into the, 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 you know, the competency of a business and, and being able to work with businesses to help them understand some of their business practices and how they might be um, out of alignment with the expectations uh, of our communities. Um, so those are still going on. I think what we've, um, we've understood and I think what conscious capitalists um, have understood as well is that there's a big movement around helping businesses become better and understanding that, um, that what goes into that, what are the di different components that go into that? So uh, it's probably almost 30 years ago, we started giving out Torch Award for Ethics and we started evaluating businesses based on our standards. And those were really bu built around character, culture, community, and customers. And so you look at those four areas and those are the four tenets of conscious capitalism. I mean, those, those, that kind of is, is another incredible alignment. And, uh, and so knowing that we are honoring these businesses for that, the next phase was really, can we assist them in improving in those areas? And before we go down the road of, uh, of assisting, we kind of need to do a little bit of, uh, of assessing. And so um, we built a uh, uh, BUB trust score um, tool that enables employees of an organization to actually give feedback based on character, culture, community, and customers. And that opens up engagement, it opens up conversations, and, um, and the ability to really um, uh, take things to the next level um, and, and have conversations uh, um, as to how to become a better business. So I actually remember speaking at the Pacific Southwest Torch Award for Ethics a few years ago, hosted by Matt Felling, um, the head of the BBB there, and was just so impressed by the businesses that were honored there, the work that they were doing. 
living out those principles and really representing the best of what business can be. So uh, one level, I want to say kudos on that. And I also am curious what you see as the future for those awards and how and how this can be leveraged in order to highlight even more businesses and those and those great practices. Well, really, create you know, um, celebrating marketplace role models is kind of the, part of the of our mission, and so it it, it incorporates. Not only the Torch Award for Ethics, it also incorporates um, a Spark Awards for young entrepreneurs under 35 to really kind of showcase to them, um, showcase them in a way that they're um, they're coming up uh, early on in their engagement. Um, we have Student Integrity Awards. We have the Laws of Life Essay Contest. So we do a lot of things relative to celebrating um, role models in the community. You mentioned Matt Failing. He's taken it to a, a whole nother level with, you know, a co-working space and uh, um, a, a number of different initiatives that are really working to help um, build small businesses and help um, provide resources. So he's doing incredible work there, there in the Phoenix, San Diego areas as well. Um, Torch Awards, I think um, the trust score is going to feed into that because it's going, not everybody is, is seeking an award. And, and rightfully so, but if they understand that you can actually understand what goes into being a better business, and then you can start down the path of having those type, types of conversations um, through an assessment, um, you know, what a great way to, uh, to be intentional about actually um, what you believe in and, uh, and taking it one step at a time, because it's a journey. We all make mistakes. Never do we do, we do everything right. So, uh, you know, it's a process. And that's another point of alignment between what you're doing and conscious capitalism, because it's not a binary from our perspective either as to whether you're a conscious business or a conscious leader or not. It's a journey and it's one that never ends. You keep working on getting better. Sometimes you make mistakes, that's inevitable, but there's always a way to do better even if you're not making mistakes. And it's about pushing business leaders to keep striving to improve and provide for us as well, a community of support to share best practices and help leaders come up with new initiatives and new ways of using business as a force for good. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when once you take that trust score, then you, you say, okay, what's next? And so you have some actionable items. Well, one of the what's next things is to get involved with conscious capitalism, <laughs> because you, 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 you obviously are intentional enough that you want to take a look at your, your culture and you want to take a look at evaluating how impactful you are in your community, and you want to make sure that you're taking care of your customers appropriately, and you're of high character. And so if you're, if you're intentional about that, then get involved with a bunch of people that are really focused on that. And, uh, and so that's a, that's a, a neat way to, to, uh, to make the shift over to uh, involvement with both organizations. I appreciate that. Anyone who's involved with the BBB, I think, would be a great candidate to get involved with conscious capitalism and vice versa. And, you know, you actually mentioned how the Pacific Southwest BBB run by Matt is doing some innovative stuff like with the co-working space and other initiatives. And I, I found this fascinating when I realized that the BBB has a pretty decentralized structure. So it's not just the national organization doing things. You've got these BBBs in different states and areas that are coming up with their own projects and things to do as well. So I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about how that works and how people can get involved with the BBB locally and nationally. Yeah, well, first, relative to how we're, how we're set up, um, you know, innovation comes from the local level, and it always has been. And um, they know their communities. Um, that's one of the, the best parts about the BBB is uh, being in 150, 160 different uh, communities, um, boots on the ground. They know the different players. They know um, the communities. And so they innovate based on the needs of their community. And then they take that innovation and then they share that with the system. And the, at the IABB, our goal is to try to help streamline the, the opportunities for that to really take, uh, um, take uh, root everywhere if possible. Um, and if not everywhere in those areas that are, are uh, have the need or have the capacity to do that, um, as well as for us to, um, uh, you know, data is such a big thing. So we want to, if we can provide the resources from a big brand perspective from data and drive more people to um, those resources, then it adds value to them in the local communities. 
but basically what um, the way businesses get involved is that they take a look at um, what we stand for and what we're all about. We sell on mission. When I say sell, I mean, we're contacting businesses and saying, this is our mission. Do you want to be a part of it? There's an accreditation process that, um, that we take businesses through um, and which is now venturing into our BAB for good program, which is actually going to be um, adding that value to, um, uh, to those, uh, you know, empowering consumers to find and engage in legitimate purpose-driven um, companies um, in their communities. And so with that in mind, um, we do the evaluation meeting the standards of accreditation, and then you are a part of the community and you're taking advantage of all those resources that those local BABs are providing. Um, and it is vast. I mean, often, oftentimes when we talk to, to individuals that aren't familiar with us, we, the first thing we hear is, I had no idea you were involved in so much. <laughs> and, in you know, taking over this job in January, I now say that a lot as well. <laughs> it, it is so much and could be a little, and, and it can be overwhelming perhaps for people, but it, it sounds like the first step is to just reach out to the BBB to find a way to get involved. Or, yeah, or what I would, would be the next step? Yeah, absolutely. I would I would reach out to the local BBBs. Um, we can uh, um, we can make that information available um, and the contact information. Um, uh, you know, I think the BBBs need to do the same thing with the the different conscious capitalist movements in the different communities. And um, and that you know that's how it starts is conversations and you know people of like mind to say you're right you are working on some of the same things. How can we help you? How can you help us? Um, I mean. I'd love to get more visibility into what you're doing um, through our platform. And, uh, and I think that's, um, you know, with the number of people that are coming to our website a year, I think that that's a, a value we can bring to the table. I would love that and vice versa. I would love for us to have conscious capitalists working more with the BBB as well in what you're doing. And so we'll, we'll be turning it over to more Q&A in a few minutes, but if anyone has any questions or suggestions for how we might have more collaboration between Conscious Capitalism and the BBB. That explicitly is one of the goals Kip and I had in putting this, this conversation together. We wanna to hear from you and think about what more we can do going forward with this being a starting point. Before we get to that though, I, I wanna go back a moment actually to what I think is really interesting and was an early insight of the BBB of the importance of building trust in business in order to support the free enterprise system and that you not only have emphasized that and continued that over the 100 plus years of the BBB's existence, but you've added on to that and evolved the way to develop trust. In their most recent impact report, you really do emphasize purpose-driven businesses that conscious capitalism has been advocating for since our beginning over a decade ago. And I'm wondering if you could say a little bit about how that has been brought in, because I, I'm assuming that Purpose wasn't something that was talked about 100 years ago with the BBB. It's something that has been added on to it over time. Yeah, and I get, again, a lot of that has come from local um, need and innovation where you've got um, pockets of, uh, of um, uh, socially driven companies that are really um, getting a lot of the attention, but there's so many more that um, are really trying to understand um, you know, what their place is in, in that and I think one of our roles is to make sure that we can then communicate for everybody that's looking for that kind of information. I want to I want to work at a at a um, at a business like that that uh, um, that is environmentally friendly and that is um, uh, has a culture uh, focus and so forth. And if that's the case, then um, we want to be able to provide that information. And so one of the ways that we do that again is to evaluate based on standards. So the BUB for Good program is a development of standards so that those um, those businesses can then um, uh, be able to really show their validation um, of their commitment to uh, the BUB for good standards. So it's similar to being able to um, consumers coming to us and they have a seal that actually says they've been validated to be socially conscious business um, and, uh, and, and be able to um, really take pride in that um, as they move forward. And that is in a pilot stage. And if there's champions out there that really want to get involved and pilot that, um, Mel Trump, our, at our institute, would take that in a, in a heartbeat. 
um, we're really uh, starting to get a lot of momentum and we'd like to see some more people in, in, engaged in that process. I love piloting things and testing it out and would love for our, our community to help with us. So who, who can they reach out to, Kip, and how can they talk to them if they want to be a part of that pilot? Yeah, Mel Trumpauer is the executive director of the BBB's Institute for Marketplace Trust, and um, you can connect with her at um, M Trumpauer at uh, at iabbb.org. That is really exciting. And so, actually, let me follow up and ask if you have anything else in the works that's coming up at the BBB that you're really excited about. Oh, well, we've got, uh, well, we're working on our strategic planning. And so we, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we are focusing a lot on, uh, um, and really the value for businesses. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, we, we bring businesses on based on the mission. And then, and then those businesses then say, all right, I need help in a lot of different areas. So we're really focusing on small businesses and, and the, the ways that we can assist them. So that could be through partnerships. It could be through um, engagement at the local um, communities that, the, that um, they're involved in. Um, so we're working on a num number of different initiatives to provide resources and education to businesses. Fantastic. And we've already got a question from Andrea in the, in the chat asking for contact information for the piloting opportunity. We will get that to you. And I think we'll also make sure to include that in the follow-up email that we send out afterwards so that anyone can participate. And we, we actually are starting to get some questions rolling in. So Kip, I wanna start bringing other people into the conversation, but wanna see if there's anything else you want to add before we start to talk with everyone else. No, I'd love to hear where people are at and what their questions might be. That'd be great. All right. Well, let's start with a question from Christopher Link. Are there any examples of where organizations utilize customer complaints registered with the BBB as a conduit for making purpose-driven or conscious business practices for developing it from there? From the complaints themselves? I think I think that's the question, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Well, early on with the trust score, one of the things that we would do is if we needed to call a business in based on a problem, um, we would actually bring one of our uh, consultants on the trust score into the room with their permission so that they could see whether it was something that was systemic. And, you know, oftentimes it's character issues more than competency issues. Um, and so that kind of needs to be fleshed out it, um, in the evaluation. But yes, there's been a number of times where businesses might have a C or a D rating and they say, they come in and they say, I, I need to really understand, um, you know, what caused this. And so then we walk through the different um, patterns of complaints that might have taken place. And we say, yeah, there's, you're being dishonest relative to the way that you set up your commission structure so that the person who's working the job does not want to communicate that to the home office because they get a bonus based on that. You know, and, and so those are different things that uh, from a, uh, you know, culture perspective, how you set up your business could have big ramifications from a complaint perspective and a rating perspective. Um, once they understood that, they said, you're exactly right. We need to change that structure. That's not that's not the way that we want to be. I Fantastic. And, and I think that actually could be an opportunity for us to work together more to understand what you see as common uh common flaws errors unethical activity that happens and ways for us to call that out and and talk about the opposite of of that as giving specific recommendations for what businesses should do yeah i think that's a, that's a possibility we, we have a lot of data on that <laughs> fantastic <laughs> thank you chris for asking about that <laughs> um the next question we have is from susan alexander and she is wondering, what are some of the measures the BBB has around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the relationship to building trust within the organization? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I, um, I think that, uh, um, you know, integrity includes respect, ethics, intent, and working towards a diverse, inclusive, and equitable marketplace. That's uh, That's been embedded into our mission statement. Um, and uh, And with that being the case, we have developed internally our own uh, diversity initiative to both look at the IABB and then to look at the landscape of the Better Business Bureaus and really understand 
uh, what are the also the needs of the consumers? So what information are they wanting from us? And if um, and if that's information that we can gather um, and be able to provide back to the consumers um, on specific businesses, um, then that's the data that we want to get and provide. Um, so it's it's both from a just like the trust scores, both from a very personal level because there's some diversity questions that come up when you run that um, that trust score, and then you have to have those conversations, and then you have your employees involved in those conversations so that you can. Uh, be intentional about making improvements. Um, and we've got about five different uh, task forces on, on different areas of uh, DEIA that are really um, focused on um, what are the one or two things that we can really move the needle on. Fantastic. Thank you, Kip. So next question is from Will Abrams, who asks, how does the BBB enable collaboration between local community-minded businesses and local nonprofits that provide valuable community services? Given climate change, COVID, and forces that are driving a, a scarcity of resources and a scarcity mindset, how can we position business and nonprofit collaboration as a competitive advantage? Well, I mean, that's music to my ears. I mean, we in Columbus, we did that nonstop. I mean, we constantly look for collaborations um, whether it was the SBDC, um, we we also have a Wise Giving Alliance that works with uh, charities and evaluates them on uh, 20 charitable accountability standards. So we have a good network of, of charities that we uh, we work with in our communities. Um, we also have um, you know we have associations with law enforcement because of obviously a lot of the scams and a lot of the um, real problem um, areas. And so. Um, in Columbus, we had a, a consumer fraud advisory group, and so we pull in you know, all different aspects of law enforcement, uh, again, because we had a lot of the data and because we were neutral and we could share, this is what we're hearing on the front lines relative to a lot of these different issues that are out there. With, um, with COVID, I mean, it was, a, it was a mad dash to find who we could collaborate with because we knew that, um, that everybody was scrambling to make sure that businesses, small businesses um, and large, we're getting the resources that they needed. And, um, and so with 95 BUBs all wanting to do what's best for their communities, they're constantly bringing up different collaborations and they're bringing them to my attention. You know, we should do this more robustly. This is a great organization. And um, so that is a conversation that's taking place um, uh, almost daily. So something that we've all, we talked about at Conscious Capitalism for a long time is that Nonprofits are businesses themselves. They, they have a different tax status, but when you're running a nonprofit, you're still running a business. You're leading individuals. You have to deal with strategic planning and budgeting and everything else that any for-profit business has to as well. So I'm actually curious, are nonprofits a part of the BBB as well, like they are part of conscious capitalism? Yeah, they are. And, um, and there's a certain percentage of BBBs that have robust um, charitable accountability programs where they're reaching out, they're actually providing a, um, a wise giving alliance seal um, based on those 20 standards. Um, and then um, and then any other charity that wants to be evaluated on those has an option as well at, with the wise giving alliance. Um, but as you stated, you know, what we're finding is that they're all starting to blend together a little bit. There's a lot of nonprofits that are doing, um, you know, it's the, the, more, um, you know, for business types, they're starting to blend into the for business world. And, um, and a number of those are falling right into that BUB for good program as well, um, because of some of their uh, social enterprises that they have uh, associated with them. Um, so yeah, we are uh, heavily involved with the nonprofit communities. Um, we find, yes, that they are um, uh, very much having the, the same issues that businesses are, are have, but sometimes are, are more, obviously more susceptible to downturns and, and uh, issues related to uh, COVID. Unfortunately so, but I'm, I'm really glad to hear that they're a part of the BBB as well. You know, in a, in a meaningful way, I think a lot of what conscious capitalism is doing and what we're seeing the transition happening in businesses doing is actually getting nonprofit and for-profits 
to function very similarly to one another. They may have different revenue models, but it's about getting for profits to really think about their higher purpose, the impact they're making in the world, the way that nonprofits have always thought about this, and helping more nonprofits be efficient and more productive in a way that the for profit world has figured out for a long time and iterates on and just gets better at it more quickly, it seems, than nonprofits. But bringing those two together. Yeah, no, I think it's smart. And I think that, you know, partnering with businesses and nonprofits, uh, uh, you know, is a great way to uh, build relationships. And, uh, and you know, we had, again, through the trust score, we recognized in Central Ohio that we, we were not focused. We thought we did our job because we, uh, we really had a, a charitable program. But the, the employees were saying, but what about us? We really want to, you know, really do what we say we should do, and that is be involved in the community. So we started an initiative with our employees of being involved with nonprofits within the community, and that lifted everybody up. And, and it really, um, it spoke to us, you know, really, um, again, being intentional about what we're evaluating from a, a business perspective. Unfortunately, I love that. Unfortunately, that one led to them suggesting that uh, to raise money, I repel off the PNC building, uh, 20 stories, to uh, to raise some money for the uh, uh, Central Ohio Youth for Christ, a wonderful organization in uh, Central Ohio. I feel like there's a longer story there that, uh, that I would <laughs> love to hear from you at some point. <laughs> Will do. Um, Will Abrams is wondering, given your response, are there opportunities through the BBB to present models of conscious capitalism to business leaders and help facilitate more, more collaboration among local businesses and nonprofits? You know, what's the relationship of the BBB and other like-minded organizations to, say, the local chambers of commerce and rotary clubs? And are there services complementary and coordinated to support local businesses? Yeah, I think they. I think there are. Um... You know, I think that uh, there's so many chambers of commerce in, in every in every market. I know we had you know 40 or 50 of them, and we we did partnerships with uh, with a whole lot of them because we went, we had 21 counties in Central Ohio, so we wanted to um, to really try to get out to every every single one of them. So yeah, we we do all sorts of work with them, but you know more specifically, um, there could be a um, a very specific way in which. Um, businesses that are interested, they're engaged with the BBB and they're interested in taking things to another step, um, that they could then be, have conscious capitalism brought in to the conversation and say, you know, it's obvious that you really want to uh, be involved at a, at a different level. And so here's an opportunity because we're partners with them. So, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's been a number of different um, we, could, we usually use MOUs, Memorandums of Understanding, which basically says, um, yeah, we're going to provide these sorts of resources, and we're going to uh, uh, we're going to promote these of yours, and we're going to uh, work in collaboration because we're trying to accomplish the same thing. And so, you know, it's, there's uh, um, all of us need to work together in order to actually advance trust in the marketplace. And and I'll just add in that I completely concur. We need to work together, and even if the organizations have different opinions, different missions and strategies to a certain extent, if we've got 70, 80 percent in alignment for what we're trying to achieve, that is so much room for us to work together. The the question just is, how do we do so effectively? Whether it's in the for-profit or nonprofit space, just coordinating different organizations takes time and work, and we need the right ideas to put into practice. And so, uh, Will, I'll also throw out there that in addition to Kip and I talking right now about how the BBB and conscious capitalism can collaborate, I know that from conscious capitalism side, we would love to talk with other chambers of commerce, rotary clubs, and others to figure out how we can mutually support business leaders in different communities and around the country to build trust in the marketplace to elevate humanity through business that way. So if you have ideas for that or have connections that you would recommend, let us know so we can figure that out. You know, a couple of them is that we do so many, we speak to so many chambers and uh, and Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis and Clubs and um, and going in there with somebody from Conscious Capitalism, um, you know, doing it a, a joint presentation would be great. Um, but I'll go back to what we said before, and that was um, innovation comes from those local chapters. And so 
um, if the local conscious capitalist get, chapter gets together with the BBB, I, I suspect they're going to come up with some really neat ideas um, because uh, they're not all going to come from, uh, from you and I. But I will explicitly say they're not going to come from me, at least, because I don't have the answer for what to do with all of them right now. Just the desire and intention and support for building those collaborations. Yeah, me too. So I have a question from Cindy Arledge that I think is a great one for you. What's the ideal time for a new company to join the BBB? Well, a new company could join the BBB as early as in six months in business. And um, it used to, it used to be a little bit longer than that uh, before they could join us. And we kind of, we took that approach that um, if that's where they need us, then that's when we should be reaching out to them. Um, they of course have to meet the standards um, of accreditation. Um, we can assist with that along the way um, and, uh, and begin working with them. But if a company um, is, you know, needs the assistance right from the get-go, we want to be there for them. And if we don't have the answers, then that's where we want to um, drive them to some of our partners in the community that can help. But um, early on, um, reach out to us. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, one of the things that people don't understand is that you, for free of charge, you can go set up your own profile. You can go online tonight and you can set up a profile. And that profile um, you know, really puts you in the space of the BBB because consumers are coming to us, um, you know, to the, wanting to find information about you. And so you can, you can post, you know, all the information that they're looking for. And w through our studies, just seeing that, seeing your logo, seeing the videos, seeing information about you helps build trust for the consumer. If they don't find anything on you, then that's, you know, that they, st they take a step back. Fantastic tip. So Cindy, I think the answer is as soon as, if, if you're asking the question, it's probably a good time to get involved. And so I'd encourage you to reach out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Kip, I think we're, we're getting through the list of questions well. If anyone does have any final questions, please type them in. But otherwise, I want to give you a chance, Kip, to just share any final thoughts you have with the BBBers and conscious capitalists who are gathered here today. Well, I mean, as I'm sure you all have the same feeling, I mean, I've been involved over 30 years with the BBB, um, and, you know, it's, I, I fall into the, one of those categories where I love the place that I work, I love the, the mission that I work for, um, and it really, um, it really becomes a part of you, and, and that's true with everybody that, uh, that I speak to in the BBB system. I imagine that's true with conscious capitalism, and so, um, you know, I would just encourage everybody to... Uh, um, to find ways to be more intentional about it. Um, it's, it's something I work towards um, day in and day out. It's hard to do because you get so busy, but it's one thing to say, um, this is what I stand for. It's another thing to say, okay, if I stand for that, what are the one or two things I can do that's going to really t take me to another level, whether it's education, whether it's going out to lunch with somebody that you don't know and you're trying to you know, get to know somebody um, uh, that has similar um, uh, of mind. So I would encourage people to do that. Um, the BBB is is moving into a whole new space, and um, we're very excited about it. And um, the you know the BBB you, you know your grandfather's BBB is over, and the new B, the new BBB is really um, taking flight. And so I think that. Now is probably the best time to um, to reach out and say, tell me more about what you're involved in, uh, because it's very exciting, um, and we're really taking things to another level, and um, we'd love to do it in concert with you all. Fantastic, Kip. I am so excited about the direction the BBB has been going in for years, excited about the direction it's going in with you. and. We've got some ideas for how to work together that we didn't have before this call. So I want to thank everyone who participated in asking questions, giving us ideas. We want to keep that going after this to really build the relationship between conscious capitalism and the BBB. So with that, I'll just say once again, Kip, thanks for joining us in everything that you're doing. Looking forward for us to take action on that going forward. Thanks, Alexander. You're awesome. Appreciate it. <laughs>